everybody my name is Mandy and today we are going to be doing my end of September wrap up since the month is over I'm gonna give you guys some stats about the entire month even though I did talk about the first half of my reading in my mid-month September wrap up in the first half of September I read 10 books and the month was going pretty slow for me after that and I was fine with it and then in the last half of the month, I got really stressed, and so I started picking up some of my old favorites that I knew were really quick reads, and I added like four books in the last like three days of the month. I read them really fast. But total, I read 20 books for the month of September. Out of those 20 books, I read five audiobooks. I read four physical books, straight up just physical reading, and I read 11 mixed books where I partially listened to them and partially read them physically. My overall rating for the month was 3.65 and for the second half of the month my overall rating was 3.8 so not too much of a difference there. Now that the nitty gritty statistics are out of the way, let's get to it. The first book that I read was The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This one, I don't know. So it's about this girl who has an arranged marriage. She's a princess and the day of her wedding she decides that she can't do it and she runs away. She becomes a waitress, I guess, in a tavern. Well, she really does all this stuff. She starts working in a tavern and does all the things within the tavern and the prince that she was supposed to marry and also an assassin both separately find her uh, but somehow they both instantly fall in love with her and yeah it that's kind of the basicness behind it I'm not entirely sure how I felt about this book I gave it a three star rating because it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't like my favorite read of the year. It was just okay, and I'm very conflicted about whether or not I want to continue on with the series. It's a trilogy, and this one, I probably wouldn't have continued on with the series, but the book ends in a pretty big cliffhanger, and I just don't know if it gets better or what. If you've read this series before, please let me know if. I should continue on. Yeah, the, the fact that it was like insta-love, I mean the prince, it's fine if he instantly falls in love with her or whatever, but the assassin that was sent to kill her from another kingdom, he like had insta-love and there wasn't really any kind of explanation for that. She also, I don't know if it was just me not paying close enough attention to the audiobook, it seemed like she was trying to be purposefully deceptive over the point of views because we didn't actually, when we got, we got the point of views of the assassin and the prince, the princess didn't know who they were, and it seemed like she was trying to make you think that the person you were seeing in the princess's point of view was the other. And it was just confusing and I'm not sure if I liked that trying to be purposefully deceptive. Either way, let me know if I should finish this series, if it's worth it or not. I'm... I could go either way at this point. The next book that I read was These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. This is a sci-fi novel. Sci-fi's never really been my thing, but I read Aurora Rising by Jake Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, and since then I've been a lot more open to it. And I enjoyed this book. I gave it a four star rating. Basically you have two characters, one named Lilac and one named Tarver. It's a dual perspective novel. And they are both passengers on this giant spaceship. It's basically a cruise ship in space. That's what it kind of seemed like to me. So total luxury, total everything fancy. And something happens and the ship goes down. Uh, Lilac and Tarver end up in a escape pod together. And they crash land on a planet and it looks like they're the only survivors. It follows their journey on trying to figure out what happened and trying to get rescued. I enjoyed this book. I was a little bit creeped out in the middle 
in the middle, I'm not gonna lie, the audiobook had at some parts some creepy background noise that was freaking me out, so maybe I should have saved this book for October. But overall, I thought it was good. I thought it was a good story. I don't have much experience with sci-fi, so I don't know how unique the actual story was, but for me, who doesn't have any experience with sci-fi, I enjoyed it. The writing style was good. Uh, they had, at the beginning of each chapter, you had a bit of a transcript from an interview with Tarver, the boy, after this incident occurred. So you got little bits and pieces of the story that he was telling them of what happened on the planet. But if you're into sci-fi even a little bit, I definitely recommend this. I mainly got it because they have some beautiful covers and luckily the insides were good too this time. I mean, isn't that gorgeous? You've got, I don't know, I've always been, I've always loved star patterns and star things. And so you've got a gorgeous dress and stars. What more do you need in a book cover? The next book that I read was a library book that I just picked up on a whim and it is The Me I Meant To Be by Sophie Jordan. I've read another book by Sophie Jordan. It was the Firelight series, if you've ever read that. So it's that one is more of a fantasy and I figured I would check out her contemporary. Unfortunately, I was disappointed by this one. I gave it a 2.5 star review. Basically, you have two best friends. One of them has just gone through a breakup and the other one has been secretly in love with her best friend's boyfriend for years, like before they were even dating. And the best friend who's just gone through a breakup, she starts coming up with a girl code and one of the rules is you never go for your best friend's ex-boyfriend. So of course that's happening, and so while the one friend, what's her name? While the one friend Willa is trying to fight her feelings for her best friend's ex-boyfriend who happens to be her neighbor who she's known her entire life, she, or her other friend Floor is starting to fall for her tutor who is not her typical type. I don't know, it sounded promising, but it really fell flat. I feel like to discuss my problems with the book would give you spoilers and I don't want to give spoilers so I'll just leave it at this. I didn't enjoy it very much and I uh, will probably not be picking up anything else from this author again. The next book that I read was The Summer I Found You by Jolene Perry. I picked this book up years ago at a writers conference back when I was still actively writing and this was actually... I think the conference was right before I got married, so four and a half years ago I picked this up and haven't read it. Because it was at a writer's conference, the author was actually there, and it's signed by her. I just hadn't read it, and so I thought that it was about time that I finally picked it up. This is about two people. It's a dual perspective novel again. You've got Kate and Aiden. Kate has just been dumped. And she's feeling really sad about it and to top it all off she has been dealing with the stress of a new diagnosis of diabetes for the past few months and it's been really hard on her and she's been trying to struggle with figuring out how to take care of herself when she doesn't want to put all the work into it and then you have Aiden who has recently come back from Afghanistan he was planning on being a career military man only there was an accident with a bomb and he lost an arm over there so he's trying to learn how to deal with living life with just one arm they come together and they really feel like they understand each other and they get really close to each other I gave this three stars I mean it wasn't the most amazing thing that I had ever read but it still wasn't bad I will say they kind of seem to jump into this relationship just a little bit too fast but it did get slowed down and dialed back by the end of the book. The next book that I read was Crazy Rich Asians. It's by Kevin Kwan. I think a lot of people know what this is about because the movie came out last year or maybe the year before that. I honestly don't remember exactly when. Uh, but a girl goes to meet her boyfriend's family only to discover that they are crazy rich and Asian. I thought this book was just okay. I know a lot of people really love this book 
and I thought it gave really good insights into Asian culture that I didn't know before and I really liked the characters but overall it just didn't shine for me I don't know exactly what was lacking but I did not like it, I didn't love it, it was just a middle ground book for me. Not sure if I will be reading the next one or not, but I am semi-interested in finding out what happens to the characters next, so we'll see. Okay, at this point in the month, it took me, well we'll say, so if we take the second half of the month, and three quarters of that second half, if that makes any sense at all, hopefully your brains aren't hurting, is how long it took me to read the first five books, which it really isn't a big deal, but I was definitely going slower than the first half of the month, and me going slow is like everyone else's normal, and I don't say that to brag, I just read really fast. You guys probably all catch a lot more than I do, because I just read through them so fast because I want to know the ending. That's one reason why I reread books, because I miss so many things the first time around, because I'm so excited to get to the end. Anyways, at this point in the month, I got really stressed out. We have been having some issues with our downstairs neighbor. We just moved into this place about two months ago, and already I could film an entire video telling you all of the things about our downstairs neighbor, and I won't. I'll just leave it at we've been having some issues. And those issues have really been stressing me out because I don't like having people not like us and I don't like having any kind of contention. And anyways, at that point in the month, I needed light fluffy things and the only way I knew for certain that I could get those light fluffy things is to reread some of my favorites from being an early teen. And that's what I did. Like, I think I read... I think I read four out of these last five books within like a three day period. The first book that I have from this period is All American Girl by Meg Cabot. You've heard me talk about Meg Cabot before, she was my favorite as a teenager, and so there is a lot of nostalgia involved for me in reading one of her books. Basically this is about a girl who saves the life of the president and then falls in love with his son. Uh, that's the basics of it. It's a fun, light romance. There are a couple of problems with it, I'd say, that I didn't care about so much when I was younger, such as before all of this happens, she thinks she's in love with her sister's boyfriend and acts about how he's her soulmate and how one day he's going to realize it, and she doesn't think about her sister's feelings in that. It's alright, she realizes he's not her soulmate. Also, it's very dramatic. And I guess that does fit into the teenager mindset, but I will say I was never this dramatic when I was a teenager, but I know some teenagers are this dramatic, so I guess I was a little hard to relate to the drama. But overall, I mean, this was actually, aside from The Princess Diaries, this was my first Mike Cabot book, so I do have a lot of love for it, despite some of the problems. I still gave it four stars, probably mostly based on nostalgia, let's be real. Okay, this next book wasn't chosen out of nostalgia, it just, I actually started reading this a lot earlier in the month, and I slowed down and just ended up finishing it after I had started into these nostalgia reads. And that is Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater. This is a reread for me, but I hadn't read it for a long time and I didn't remember much about it. This is the first book in the Wolves of Mercy Fall series. Basically, you have a girl named Grace who watches the wolves in the woods behind her house. She's always been fascinated with them and eventually she finds out that the wolf that she was really just felt this connection with is actually a human. All of them are actually humans. It's a werewolf book. The werewolves turn into werewolves or turn into wolves during the winter time and they're human during the summer. So she meets Sam and it is coming into winter and he should be a wolf but he, things happen and he becomes a human and the book is all about their race to keep him human uh, because after a while the wolves stop changing back into humans and they just stay a wolf full time and he knows that it is his last year. I hope that wasn't too confusing 
It was a good book. I gave it, originally when I read this book, I gave it a 4 star rating. And now I bumped that down to about a 3.5. It was good. It's not as good as The Raven Cycle. And I know that a lot of people say that. But you can still see bits and pieces of Maggie Stiefvater's writing style. She has a really good imagery in her writing, which I enjoy. And that's what I got for you. The next three are part of a series, so I'll just talk about them together. I mentioned these books in my Books That Need More Love video, which I will link down below. I read the Dairy Queen series by Katherine Gilbert Murdoch. Uh, the first book is about, well, they're all about a girl named DJ, who her parents own a farm and her dad has a bad hip, and so she is basically stuck doing all of the work, and she feels like she's in a rut until they're really good friends with the rival football coach, uh, that he is their good family friend, and even though they keep that rivalry there, he is still like their uncle. And his current quarterback has no work ethic, so he sends him to the farm to gain work ethic. He says, if you want to start this year, you have to go and work on the farm. So he comes and eventually DJ actually starts training him for the football season, and as she's helping him train, as she's helping, his name is Brian, uh, she actually realizes that she wants to go out for the football team and she feels like making that decision to try out for the football team gets her out of the rut that she's stuck in. It's a really fun book series. DJ is really down to earth. She is not really prolific. This is her writing down the story of what's happening and so it has a lot of personable writing. It's a really nice writing style, I think. And it's just honest. It just feels really real to me. And I'm telling you, you have to read all three of these. Uh, the second book goes into her time after she tries out for the football team. And then the third book is about her as she's deciding, making decisions about college because the only way that she can go to college is through an athletic scholarship. And throughout all of these, Brian is her love interest, but he, not only does DJ do a lot of growing throughout this whole series, Brian does, and it's really fun to see them grow as individuals and to a pl get to a place where they can be in a relationship. I rate these all five stars as a series. I don't know. I mean, individually, I don't know if the books are five stars alone, but together they are. And I love this series. I love DJ. I love Brian. And it's great. We made it to the end. Hooray! And like I said, I read those like nostalgia reads within like a three day period. And to be fair, those are from back in the day of YA where the books weren't quite as long. I mean, looking at an audiobook nowadays, a typical audiobook goes anywhere between like 8 to 15 hours, I think, for a general YA book, not including fantasy. At least from what I've seen with my audiobook reading. And all of these audiobooks were like 5 hours. So they were really quick and just fun reads. What did you guys read in September? I hope you like what you saw here today. If you did like what you saw, feel free to click subscribe. You can also follow me on my social media, which I will link below. I hope you're having a great bookish day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!